last game on his Ezreal. But again, the 6.10 AD carries are just not really in a position of power to deal with so many big top laners. Once again, that's the way Invictus Gaming is going to be able to flex that trundle pick. Could probably go up towards uh, to time one more time here, but with the Echo pick out, most likely going to be a support pick coming in for Tabe. The thing that we need to uh, point out, though, is that Rookie is the mid lane Echo player in the LPL, yep. so that could very easily be a mid lane Echo. In fact, I almost am 100% that it is. 100% that it's a 100% pick? Uh, I'm 100% that it's a top or a mid lane echo. We'll have to see if Rookie is going to be the one that plays this into the Victor matchup as Thresh has actually been the first lock in for the final two picks coming in for Saint. Caitlyn is the hover coming in for STYZ at the moment. This is a champion that was banned out in the previous game and a champion he's very well known for as he locks it in. You're about to have a treat, Fish. Am I? Yep, this is going to be the legacy pick for STYZ. Like you said, what made him famous, his bread and butter, we get to see his Caitlyn was banned first. Hopefully it can make a difference this time around. Now we're still waiting to see what Invictus Gaming are going to pick up as their final pick here. They are flexing the Trundle and oh. Echo for now. And it's not 100% accurate for us here. And as the Zed is going to be the lock-in coming in for Invictus Gaming. We'll you know see what? the Echo in the top lane and the Trundle support. I'm totally fine with that because it gets to mean that we get to see even more of a treat. And it's going to be Rookie's Zed. Big question mark over Zed and where he fits in the meta. I know my uh, counterpart Rusty is very adamant that Zed is... 100% broken. Obviously, the QSS change is really putting him back into power. Mm -hmm. But again, it's another split pushing composition coming out of IG. This time, no power given to Rookie. You know, Zeb was kind of like the Vladimir pick at the start of the summer split of competitive play across all the regions. We saw it a little bit in like the Oceanic region and the LPL as well, where it was banned out but never picked. And then people just dropped it. Now we actually finally get to see a game here being picked up by none other than a Rookie. I think Otto, you know, he's coming in as a substitute here. He's in for a rough ride up against the set in the mid lane. <laughs> Something that he's going to be very familiar, though, again, uh, Tiangun, a famous Zed player in his own right, but this time around has the control mage. Well, let's see if he can use that Victor to his advantage. The Z was banned out, so does still have that S tier control mage to go into this matchup against Rookie. This time, though, Tabe, he's picking up the trundle here, and so Ty is going to see if he can work his magic on the Echo up against Acorn Swain, as the coaches are going to shake hands, we'll have to see if IG can pick up a 2-0 win here, or if Sank can come back, but don't go anywhere, we're going to, we're going to go straight into game number two very shortly. Loaded on to Summoner's Rift for the second match of this best of three series between Saint and Invictus Gaming. One more time, the champion's going to run out across the Rift and try and scout out for vision across all different directions of the jungle. It's a five point. They stand at the five entrances to the jungle as mm -hmm. well as the lanes. Um, again, we've been saying it all night. It's a priority focus on two top lanes. So if you look at Saint's composition... Theoretically, you have Caitlyn and Thresh. Uh, there's probably, they're one of the strongest 2v2 lanes in the game. Uh, they passively won against Rain and Tabe last game. They now have a range advantage on their support pick, Thresh versus Trundle, so they're going to look to do the exact same thing. Now, Otto opted into the Victor, although we are going to actually see a lane swap, which theoretically should just survive and neutralize Rookie, but Rookie. He smells blood in the water. He goes for the Zed pick. He finds the Assassin. He's looking to put this guy into the ground and to again snowball the game out of control. Last game, it was against Snoopy. So different mid laner, different pace. But Rookie must be feeling pretty good right now. Certainly would on this Zed pick. You know, very aggressive laner on a very aggressive champion. We have to see how he's able to use that here. And again, another lane swap to try to put down this uh, Swain. But it's actually going to be not matched by IG. Saints. Wow, the Swain opting into the lane swap. Hmm. I find that curious. Interesting coming up from Saint. They didn't go and put any deep vision now, so it's a blind lane swap coming up from the lineup. See how they're able to uh, work with it. They've got a trick up their hands. Maybe just really prioritizing keeping Zatai down since he did win the MVP on a great performance last game. Doesn't mm -hmm. have his trundle this time. Said 
Tabe picked it up away from him. Mm -hmm. For now, we have to see what Saints are going to do with this lane swap started and how RG are going to react. Scary thing for me, as Tabe is trying to be a little bit of a pest, is that this means that the mid lane is going to be relatively isolated between Rookie and Otto, but already Otto putting down a world of hurt onto this set. He is not Snoopy. He's also giving Rookie the Rookie treatment, standing on the back of his caster creeps and really abusing his rage advantage right now. So this is why they had him as a substitute. He gets to watch the first game. Oh, he lanes his Victor, copies it in game number two, uses it against Rookie. Has to be it, right, Ruskarin? No. No? Okay. <laughs> Pretty sure there were some external factors. <laughs> Pretty sure as well. I think one of them being that you have to pick the substitutes before the game actually starts too. <laughs> But it's really nice to see that Otto is still in form, at least for the initial levels and initial part of this game. Uh, we will have a swap back, though. So a lot of pings going down bottom, and it's going to be an initial wave that's pushed forward between Saint. And it looks like they tried to blind predict a lane swap, and they're trying to now match up across from Invictus Gaming and get this Swain into the 1v1. And immediately we do see Invictus Gaming send them back down as Otto is actually going to get exhausted here. As Otto exhausts Rookie, sorry. That's a lot of damage down towards that Zed kid. Doesn't really want to face check this jungle against Captain. Yeah, just concedes it, thinks that the red buff is gone, which means that Rek'Sai will be able to get in behind him. He doesn't have a mid laner. Going to be able to knock him up, get a little bit of damage down, but Kid just returns the damage in return, does get the Q off across the terrain, so instantly pops out. If you take a look at where things are at at the moment, top lane Swain is going to get that matchup against Echo. In fact, Acorn burnt the teleport to get up there, so teleport advantage for Saint at the moment. Also a level advantage for Acorn, so this in the initial lane swap, uh, Swain has come out on top as now they're going aggressive bot. Siu looking to try and find Hook, gets it onto Tabe, their heal's been popped down by Rain, they're trying to return the damage, but SDYZ gets the lots of damage down on top of that Tron, now looking to try and take down Karain, Tron's on top of the trap, might have been a misplay, SDYZ flashes forward, will take a turret shot, but he picks up two kills, Kid now trying to do what he can against the lineup. Teleports actually coming in. There's that advantage coming with Victor's game. It's insane. As Kid Flash Forward finds the kill for himself, but it's not going to be enough as Swain will be, be able to pick up a return kill. Welcome back to the LPL STYZ. It's nice to see that you haven't lost your touch on at least Caitlyn, and that is the ceiling of expectations that Saint was supposed to have coming into this. Uh, Talk split. Coming into this split of I the give up. Yeah, You got it. Don't worry. Here's no, your pen it's back. like you're climbing a mountain <laughs> and then you just face plant at the very end. <laughs> I just fell off a cliff. It's like I did it. Uh. <laughs> but STYZ, STYZ, he definitely did it there as he picks up two kills, but very aggressive thresh play coming from Sue as well. But now Tabe looks to try and return the pressure himself. Rain is going to be coming back into this lane. The final attack will be enough. Tabe cancels his to allow Siva to pick up the kill. And IG just strike back as soon as they get back into the lane. I always love uh, Trundle in tandem with skill shot base 80 carries as meanwhile mid lane. Rookie going to take a lot of damage. There's a gravity field. Rookie flashes out of it aggressively, but there's a thresh there as well. Sue has been putting in so much work this game. Kid trying to find a return kill one more time. Getting his auto attacks blocked dead will eventually fall down to the victor. What a bloody game. Not even six minutes into it, we've already got eight kills. There is chaos happening everywhere at every turn. In the end, though, the primary benefactor is going to be auto in this mid lane. 2 and 0 oh to start this game off. And on top of that, Saints already have a 1,500 gold advantage just five minutes into this game. That's a huge lead to have this early on. It's Seal. He's been putting a lot of work with this Thresh. Whew. He's all over the place. These are their signature champions. Uh, most supports, obviously, able to play Thresh, although this was a big standout for Shu. Doesn't have as much experience in the LPL as some of his counterparts do, so may still be relying on some solo queue habits. You can take a look at that bottom lane there. You can see already a huge CS discrepancy between them, about six or seven going in favor of STYZ, who just pushed him out of lane one more time, and he is a level ahead of this Siva. This is... Not going well for Invictus Gaming. But the most important aspect is checking in on where Rookie is. Again, he's going to be the thing that opens up the 1-3-1 one, one capability. So it's so crucial that this Zed doesn't fall behind. And more importantly, gets a favorable snowball. Well, he's a little bit far behind. Also, thanks to the two kills that he picked up in those messy engagements. He also does have a creep wave and a half in advantage as well as farm. But Rookie is level 6 now. Could potentially try and make a few plays with his death mark. For now, Invictus Gaming, they're the one on the back foot of Saints. They open up this game quite well. And the pink ward being destroyed just goes to show how much control Otto has of this lane right now. Uh, Rookie doesn't have any 
information or insight about where Captain is. So Victor is able to freely clear out pockets of vision from IG, and Rookie can do nothing about it. He just has to respect him. Hey, Kung gets a really good trade up in the top lane against this Wayne, chucking him down below half his health. Rookie still in this mid lane, like I said, respecting the Victor pickup here. Otto has been doing a very good job of keeping Rookie under control, not allowing him to be as aggressive as he'd like to be. And we talked about how Rookie smelled blood in the water, you know, taking the aggressive assassin pick. Mm -hmm. He threw down the gauntlet, and so far, Otto's just been slapping him back with it. And it's not often that we see Rookie get pushed around. Both junglers there just walking past Pink Woods inside of the brush. Is Captain actually going to be able to jump over into this bottom lane? Tabe is going to be the first focus as he goes down. Teleport actually cancels. Victor just comes out of the back there and is able to take down Rain in the back lines. Killing spree for Otto. And this is the Dian Gun, now known as Otto, that we also expect to retain back into the LPL. Very uh, roam heavy, aggressive, kill oriented mid laner, even on the likes of a low mobility champ like Victor. Saints are now 3,000 gold ahead of Invictus Gaming and looking to try to take down this Mountain Dragon as their first objective of the game. Otto just casually went down to the bottom lane to pick up another kill, sets the Sivir even further behind. Experience deficit and 20 CS behind this Caitlyn already has a BF sword as well. SWIZ looking really strong. And so is Otto. A lot of the power has been picked up uh, on IG's side in the hands of Kid, and now it's kind of up to Kid to move that power around and start assisting his lanes. As we do see Mountain Dragon will fall in favor of Saint. With their 3,000 gold lead at the moment, looking very strong this early into the game, next dragon to spawn will be a Cloud Dragon. So not as heavily contested, but Saint Kodestri definitely trying to push their advantage, taking down more of those objectives. And lane swap actually been initiated by, Ga uh, by Invictus Gaming. Yeah, Rain and Tape just have to get the hell out of Dodge, away from this Thresh and Caitlyn. They can no longer continue to 2v2. There's a massive item discrepancy. There's a massive CS discrepancy. And STYZ showing why this is one of his legacy pickups does mean that Zatai is now going to feel the brunt of it. Interesting decision making coming from Invictus Gaming, trying to claw their way back into this game any way possible. Acorn actually running out of mana here. In fact, it's going to be Seal that heads up into this top lane to help the Swain out a little bit. Which no problem there, leaving his uh, Caitlyn alone. Caitlyn mm -hmm. will do fine against the Echo. Doesn't have a ton of kill pressure unless uh, Zatai is able to get right on top of him, but with a 90 caliber net, should be okay. For now, though, we can actually see Zatai building a little bit aggressive on his Echo, picking up the What's the code? What term is it again? Finished Codex? Finished Codex. Pick up on the Echo, so not picking up a tank item to start the game off. And with that Null Magic Mantle, it almost looks like he wants to pick up an Abyssal Scepter as his first item. More carry oriented, we'll keep tabs on what kind of builds the tie looks for. Meanwhile, Rookie in the mid lane now actually to being, being able to put the pressure back down on towards Otto. Get some decent chunk damage down onto that mid laner. Keeping up in CS quite nicely as well, not allowing Otto to call any further ahead even though he's three kills up. But that laser just does a little bit too much damage for Rookie's liking. An issue is, is that Otto has a fairly big chunk taken out of his HP right now, so uh, Rookie actually does have kill pressure on him, especially with Ignite. Which is why Otto is having to play so defensively right now. That's an interesting shuriken coming out from Rookie. One goes one way, the other goes the opposite. <laughs> Didn't know that was possible. <laughs> Well, for now, a lot of focus on this mid lane. They're just waiting, biding their time. Xiu, he's been roaming around quite a bit on this Thresh. He's been able to catch out rotation from Kid time and time again, too, making sure that he can't get good counter ganks off. All of these rotations, though, as we see the bot lanes trade spots again, are effectively buying waves for STYZ. The CS difference between the AD carries is starting to get a little bit out of control. Again, about 13 to 14 CS will be a the kill or kills worth of gold. So STYZ is just getting farther and farther ahead. For now, though, Invictus Gaming have been able to stop the bleeding. They're keeping at the deficit they started at, making sure they play a little bit safer here against Saint. Once this tower falls down up in the top lane, though, that's going to open up one more time. We'll have to see if Invictus Gaming can pick up the one in the bottom lane, too. They haven't stopped the bleeding. They've merely slowed it down. I think if you're Invictus Gaming, that's more than what you'd like to hope for at this point in time. Top lane turret will fall down in favor of Saint. STYZ and Shu are able to take that down. 
Katzen and Acorn looking to try and defend the bottom lane out to turret two on three here. They should be able to do a good job of that. That's a tie now, has a difficult task ahead of trying to defend against a Caitlyn and Thresh shipping away the top lane in a turret. Unlike other champions, though, he's not in too much danger uh, to Caitlyn as 1v1, like not having a partner there to block the ultimate simply because he can utilize his chrono break. Mm -hmm. STYZ and Sio opting to still stay in this lane as the time. Wanted to try and get a recall in and freeze the lane out slightly more. More importantly, STYZ is trying to reset the wave by making sure that it can get underneath the tower. Mm -hmm. And we'll be able to do that. Tatai may not be able to pick up that final CS, but still holds on nicely. He's even in CS with Acorn at the moment, which is what matter, mo matters most for this top lane. A rookie still has to farm underneath this turret for quite some time, but he is not falling behind a CS against Salto still, so keeping one for one in terms of trades. Again, the bleeding has been slowed, but it hasn't stopped. Mm -hmm. STYZ is still eking out these small advantages in terms of catching, you know, one extra, two extra waves over his counterpart in rain. And it's about now tracking this Caitlyn's growth, while his auto is still sitting on a three kill advantage over Rookie. IG, they need to make sure that they can get their uh, Ghost Blade online for the Zed, start opening him up to look for the 131. Likewise, the Abyssal Scepter is now complete for Zatai. That drag is going to be coming up in a minute as well, which means it's possible for Saints to try and force another objective. We have to see if it makes this game and going to give it up. If Saint go for it, or if they're going to try and contest this, this is huge for Saint though. As they're still working on picking up another tower advantage. IG cannot contest the dragon. They need to give it up and trade towers. Again, with the Abyssal complete, it means that lane assignments, Zatai can lane across from Acorn, but they're still under quite a heavy threat of STYZ. So Saint need to understand that this is where they're strong and continue to play around this Caitlyn, open up and attempt sieging to snowball their lead. Zatai is able to pull one back for his team as he's working on taking down the top lane out of turret as well. Not quite evening out the turret advantage, but at least pulling one back. Allowing Victor's game to stay in this game a little bit longer. Saint looking a lot better with the crazy bloodbath they had early in this game. Seven kills already b before 10 minutes in this game. When everything turns to nonsense, they seem to thrive. Thriving in chaos sounds a lot like something Saint would do. It should have been the other way around, though. I mean, look at how many veteran players you have on this roster. Uh, naturally, they haven't played together, so you're still expecting uh, synergy issues, but mm -hmm. it's not what we expected out of names like Acorn and Otto and STYZ. Well, Dragon has spawned here. Saint not showing any interest at it just now. They know they have the advantage, but Rookie going to take an ultimate to the face. Coming in from the Kaelin is able to not dodge it out, actually, from his ultimate. Hextrick is going to pop. Rookie actually finds a kill onto Captain there. What a play coming out from the Zed. So aggressive there from Saint when really they had already <laughs> zoned Rookie off the tower. They could have looked to continue to siege, and this is a problem with IG's comp. They don't have great wave clear outside of their AD carry. So if Rain isn't in position, they can very easily start losing strength structures to STYZ. In fact, they actually have to blow the ultimate coming out from Grace to clear out that wave. Saving Grace, you could say, is the fact that Rookie was able to pick up a single kill while being dived in. They still may very well lose this turret. As Rek'Sai pops his ultimate, going to try and get back towards that mid lane as soon as he possibly can. Completed items, though, that are important as... Oh, they're going to dive this. Definitely going to look for it. There is a teleport available onto the Echo, but instead... Invictus Gaming is just going to give up that tower. So Invictus Gaming have uh, pulled the trigger on their side wave. You've got the Bombing Cinder as well as the Abyssal Scepter uh, completed for Zatai. So he has wave pushing with the Bombing Cinder as well as he can kind of survive Acorn. Meanwhile, Zed has kill pressure on STYZ as well as uh, Auto. So he can go ahead and be free in a lane with his Ghost Blade, but... I feel like Saint should recognize that they can just continue to apply pressure and splinter IG's mid lane. Yes, IG should be able to run away from them with Trundle with Sivir. And Rookie here is going to get jumped on by both Thresh and Captain here. Doesn't have his ultimate available just yet. He's going to get chipped down incredibly low. Ultimate does come out from Caitlyn. They're going to be able to donate the kill over to STYZ. They find another pick for themselves. Or IG will just fumble their side vision and Rookie will get picked off for free. In return, they will manage to pick up the Rift Herald, but Glimpse of the Void probably isn't going to be the turning point for Echo in one of these side lanes. Mm -hmm. And actually, Echo taking a lot of damage here from that Rift Herald. If it turned around and slapped it one more time, might have been able to take it down. I think a huge thing that we haven't even seen yet in this game is the fact that Swain's just farming this game up and slowly 
He's not being he's not being impactful on the map, but he's very happy with scaling up for Saint here. Swain doesn't have to do anything. He just needs to stop Echo. Well, there comes a hook coming in on top of Tabe. Pops the sub to try and keep himself healthy. Teleport was being channeled there coming from the Swain. Not going to be complete as Rain trying to chase down STYZ. Low on mana as the Victor pops the Chaos Storm over the back. Super taking a lot of damage. The laser comes in not quite long enough to connect onto the Amazon. But Tabe now trying to zone away this Victor. The rest of Victor's gaming going on forward. There's a flash coming in for Tatai. Looking to try and take down Captain. Getting a jump away. Rookie should be able to pick up this kill. Now they're looking for more. Ultimate comes out. Deathmark onto the Rex side just to close the gap. Here comes Tatai jumping straight on top of Otto. Seal taking a lot of damage as well. Rookie. Wants blood here, but just can't dive past that turret. 4v5, however, Acorn's been in the top lane this entire time. Does pick up, I think, two or three waves to his name, as well as pushes a big one into IG's top tower. IG gonna have to try and do something with the pick they just got onto Captain here. Last time around, they lost a turret after getting a pick onto the Rek'Sai. Doesn't look like they're gonna get, gonna get anything more other than just that. Saint are in complete control of the tempo of this game. Very different from the first game that we saw. Mm -hmm. STYZ uh, was also sitting on quite a sizable chunk of gold. He's now completed his Infinity Edge. So really just looking for maybe another 2,500 gold before he bypasses Caitlyn's power trough in mid-game. Rain, on the other hand, only has the Essence Reaver available for that Sivir. Still waiting for another Zeal item and then an Infinity Edge before he will actually become online. So Bird's gonna come out, just hits Rookie one time, and focus on trying to clear out the rest of this wave. Items coming out, it is actually gonna be that Abyssal Center being picked up by Tatai, so a little bit of extra damage onto this Echo. He's gonna go for the Sunfire Cape next. It's again just so he can survive and assign a cross from Acorn. That's where Zatai needs to be. He needs to take the Swain, and Rookie wants to get some one-on-one -on -one time with STYZ. Problem was, his last time Invictus Gaming didn't have safe enough uh, vision to his side. He was actually picked out by multiple members. So, Saint doing a good job to make sure that STYZ isn't caught out alone and continue to siege. They've been able to use this Caitlyn pick quite nicely in this match, taking down so many turrets, only one inner turret stands remaining for Invictus Gaming, and that's going to be the mid lane inner turret. Uh, Saint are just doing a well. great job recognizing that where they are strong is in their AD carry and actually moving that around the map to shut down where IG are strong, which is on their Z. They're following the lack of wave clear. They're making sure that Caitlyn's never looking across from Sivir and just losing all of her pressure to Ricochet. Invictus Gaming, they're looking to try and stall out this game, try and find a way back into it, but they have to look at the other side of the table. There is a Swain on the other team. It's going to be difficult to try and start out a game where you have this tank that just scales up into a massive beast. He's already got two of his three major items picked up, looking for a Spirit Versage next to complete the trifecta of magic resistance and health. I and actually regeneration. don't think that Swain will be that big of a problem. Now, Swain will, of course, do Swain things. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. He's going to become unkillable. He's going to be a big... Tanky front line. Stupid monster. Yeah, just uh, <laughs> absorbing so much attention. But against Trundle, um, the thing about Swain is that he can't really get on top of anyone. He needs to kind of slowly walk up to you or get a nice flank. And speaking of flanks... Tide's actually being flanked on by Seal here. Gonna take a little bit of damage and get slowed down by STYZ. But Kid is here as well. So is Tabe. They pop a teleport trying to get up into this top lane. STYZ kiting back nicely with that Hurricane. Captain's here as well. Rain pops on the hunt. Acorn has to... to tie, sorry, has to use his ultimate to get back on top of STYZ. Puts a lot of damage down onto the Caitlyn, but it's not gonna be enough. And IG, they have to back away one more time. Good damage onto the health bounce of Saint, but they just lost their top laner in that fight. Uh, fortunately for them, though, Rain is in position, so they will be able to put up a good defense on this tower and buy Rookie enough time to go back mid and create a pressure point. Exactly. Except he's actually looking to kill them. Sitting to try and find something. He's, his only viable targets are Victor and Caitlyn. Tatai is 10 seconds away from coming back up. Does have a teleport, so we can see if they're trying to make a flanking play with him once he's back up. But Saint... Just going to be happy with picking the pick up at the top lane. Some damage down onto the turret and head back to base. Still looking good for the Saint lineup. And again, uh, Swain, I actually don't think he's that big of a deal. Um, we kind of saw it there that he's very easily kiteable. Uh, Sivir can run away from him, disengage. In fact, Sivir, even if Swain gets right up in her face just due to her uh, bounce on W, she can hit Swain and still crit the back line. It's more so, again, 
creating space and separating the front line and the back line to allow STYZ to run away with the game. But even a straight 5v5, I still think Saints more important is sieging towers right now. Like well, the 5v5 is still going to be critical on auto more so than STYZ. Well, Dragon is going to be back up and online. It's another cloud drag coming out for this game. Let's see if Saint one more time go for this objective. IG, they're 4,000 gold behind, 23 minutes into this game. In no position to look for it. Hook's oh. going to come out and actually cancel the teleport coming in for Zatai. He's got nowhere to go here. Going to have to try and run away from STYZ as well. He's been caught out. Putting some good damage down onto the Caitlyn. I don't think it's going to be enough. Pops the ultimate. Doesn't land the damage, but still finds the peak. Zatai's a monster in the bottom lane. Looking for Sue as well. Not going to be able to find it though. Way too overconfident from STYZ right there to think that he could safely walk into that lane. Yes, it worked a couple of times against Rookie, but you had three people there for you. You can't just go into melee range of Echo and think that it'll turn out okay. And look at the position advantage that IG have created now. Kid and Rain able to take down the mid lane in outer turret, and now they're moving towards the top lane inner turret. They're gonna trade a Cloud Dragon, which I'm pretty sure they're okay with giving over for possibly two major objectives. Yeah, Otto not in position to act as the primary wave clear, and good preparation from Invictus Gaming. We'll see if they pull the trigger as here comes Saint for a flank. There's no STYZ in this fight, though. They could definitely try and pull this one off if IG want to try and turn that one around. Nope, they're going to go ahead and say that we have the global gold. Let's go and spin that. Try to get a little bit stronger and look towards the next fight. There's still 4,000 gold behind Saint at the moment. So, you know, saving grace. Yes, Tatai able to fight SDYZ in a two-on-one with the Thresh helping him out. But they're able to take a turret for it. But it's still very big mountain for IG to climb to get back into this game. And speaking of mountain, the saving grace for IG is the fact that the dragon spawns have been mountain cloud cloud. Mm-hmm. So Saint, yes, they have an early lead, but it, it hasn't snowballed as quickly or as uh, oppressively as it could have due to those dragon spawns. Saint being a little bit cheeky, hiding inside our bridge for quite some time. They will have Hink Ward inside of it. Now looking to see what objective they can go for next. Going to try and take the blue buff away from the IG liner. That went over towards STYC. See red buff ticking. So poor Victor not able to take that one for himself. And now Saint... Working on taking down the mid lane in a turret. Kid in no position to try and contest this rain. Desperately trying to clear against Captain. Just does no damage to the front line Rex site at this point in the game. Saint just continuing with their dominance, trying to siege up every objective they can find. But that's the key word there. It's where are they dominant? It's in the siege. Uh, the 5v5 possibly could look for them if Auto plays it correctly and uh, again is able to zone for STYZ. Caitlyn's in a good power point right now. Uh, Sivir's still looking for her crit damage effectively. But it's still this idea that keep moving him around, keep sieging towers, don't let yourself get baited into a 1-3-1. Control the pace and tempo of the game and make IG respond to you. And we can see already Yomi's Ghost Way, Black Cleaver being picked up here by Rookie. Definitely has a nice spike at this point in time. We saw what Zitai could do with the Abyssal Scepter pickup on top of STYZ earlier. Let's see if he can continue doing just that as he looks towards an Icewall Gauntlet as his next pick. Yeah, has his armor as well as the Sheen available to him now, so definitely has kill pressure, which means that STYZ needs to be grouped up, which means that Invictus Gaming, if they pressure their waves correctly, have more of an opportunity where they can start pulling Saint around the map. And I'd really like to see what Invictus Gaming is going to try and do to come back into this game, because Saint they played three games in this split of the LPL so far, and they haven't looked this great as Kid. Actually going to get jumped on by Seal and Captain Ignite is ticking on top of that Graves. is able to use the ultimate to reposition himself with a flash. And Saint able to blow another crucial summoner spell. A lot of pings going down towards Baron. Now possibly towards Rookie. Again, he does not have the safety flanking vision, so this will be relatively blind until they're right on top of him. Ultimate does come down from SIZ very early, but Seuss actually going to get jumped on straight away by the death map. Puts a lot of damage down onto this Thresh. He's going to get taken down. Rookie picks up a kill. Now they're looking for a fight. Tabe is going to jump into SIZ. Get jumped on Rookie. Double kill coming in for the mid laner. Rookie turns that one around. What was meant to be a gank turns into a double kill for this Zed. And again, STYZ and Shu are choosing the worst possible engagements. They effectively have the entire lead on their back for their team, and they are throwing it away at Rookie. You know what Rookie's saying to Tatai right now? I want this MVP, my friend. Give it to me. And he's earning it right now. That was a fantastic play then. IG holding on once more. Still at a major deficit. 5,000 gold behind the Saints lineup. I mean, naturally, Rookie presses his buttons like the best of them, but I kind of feel like MVP right now is STYZ for IG. <laughs> 
Oh, he has to stop. Stop helping the wrong team at the moment. To make this game, we're trying to find whatever they can in this smash. They've sent to tie down into bottom lane to push that one out. Otto and Stu are in this mid lane, pushing that out in favor of Saints. It's because the itemization of Rookie and Zadai has now caught up where <coughs> there are very few lane assignments for Saint to safely look across for them. They have to be together as a 5v5, which is why they're going to pull the trigger on the Baron. They've already got it down actually pretty low to ties down in the bottom lane. This Baron actually should be falling down unless we see a steal come here. Rookie is going to try and jump into the pit. It will be Rex side that picks that one up for Saint. And they will be able to back away with that objective. To tie, did do some work down on the bottom lane, picked up a turret for himself, but still good trade for Saint. That was the best possible call for Saint to make right there, so great execution on that. And it's again, go back into the siege, stay together as a 5v5. IG, they want to start getting out to these waves, again, pulling open these scenarios where one person from uh, Saint strays to the side to clear out waves. It gives Rookie these opportunities to find kills. Things just don't look great for IG. They haven't since the start of this game. About 10 minutes in, Saint were able to find an advantage, and they've been relentless with trying to keep it up. Saint just do whatever they can to stop. Uh, sorry, IG do whatever they can to stop Saint at the moment. It just isn't working. It slows it down. Doesn't quite cauterize the wound that they have at the moment. And SDYZ has been gifted them a few ways to get back into this game. And now he has the double zeal item and the Infinity Edge. Just not going to look good for, this, for the Invictus gaming lineup. Yep, that Baron play pretty much uh, compensated for any earlier mistakes STYZ had made. And IG, they don't have the wave clear to keep this siege at bay. They either need to decide we're giving away the free inhibitor and trading it for a tower, although Rookie's not in position, or we're fighting right now. Well, let's see if they go for that fight. It said this turret is going to go down. It's Invictus gaming. Look like they want to give up the inhibitor and the turret. Saint. Going to be able to take down this inhibitor. Rookie is now going to try and join the fight, but there's no avenue for him to try and get on it for an attack. Otto puts down the Chaos Soul on top of Kid. Major Ultimate being used there, but still, Rookie's game just can't stop Saint from running into the base. They have no wave clear. They don't have a lot of options. Their composition is good at one thing, and they haven't been able to execute it. Rookie now caught out, He's forced to flee. Trying to take the blue buff for himself instead. Acorn is going to be able to pick that one up for Saint. And suddenly, Saint looking a lot better than it in game one. This is a very different lineup that we expected them to be in this game. Yeah, win lane, win game has effectively been the motto, and uh, Otto stepping up huge as well. Not nearly the liability that Snoopy was for the roster in slowing down any sort of natural victory that Rookie would have in lane. He's 4 0 on this victor. Lich Bane picked up as well as the Vilas Crystal Scepter and the upgraded Hex Core. I just don't see how Invictus Game is going to be able to fight them. This turret is just going to fall down one more time. Another inhibitor will fall and Saint will just slowly crawl in towards the base of Invictus Gaming. Yeah, they're looking for a miracle play. Rookie would have to get to the back line and just delete Victor and Caitlyn. There's a power lock. Merge has to come in. There's the ultimate on the Humbeam Pop. They're trying to look for a fight. You know, this is do or die. Lots of low health bars. Rookie tried to go in. Gonna get flash on. He actually finds a kill on STYZ. That's a major carry taken down. Otto now. He jumped on the way to tie. They find two. Rookie's still alive. He goes back in. They take down the Swain as well. Now Shu and Captain have to get the heck out of there. But in Vectors Gaming, they find a four for one trade. They still lose the inhibitor though. They find the miracle play and their names are Zatai and Rookie. Both of these champions dive onto the back line. I was talking about it in game one, why I think the AD carry position is trending more towards this idea of utility-based AD carries as a rather rather uh -oh. than hyper-carry AD carries, as Rain is actually going to get chased down here. Run out. No, not going to be enough. Just gets flashed and on my captain. And it's because you have a bunch of top laners like Echo and Swain and Trundle running around and how much threat uh, they have to the back line. How easily they can hop back there. Oh, well, another turret's actually fallen down from Victor's game, and that should be a Nexus turret, I feel, as Captain trying to keep them out of their base. To tie and Kid were able to take down the Ocean Dragon in the meantime. First dragon of the game. All that does, though, is buy... Invictus Gaming some breathing room. They're still hemorrhaging from their base. They lost two inhibitors mm -hmm. as well as a Nexus turret. They do have Sivir, so quite a decent chunk of wave clear as long as Rain is alive and in position. Well, there's six turrets down at the moment, which is massive and 6,000 gold behind the Saints lineup. So they have to find that near perfect fight a couple more times to, because they're back into this game. It was a good fight from Invictus Gaming, but a little bit too late from the lineup.
They also don't have a lot of key summoners that assisted them in that previous fight. Mm -hmm. This is their final inhibitor turret that's going to fall down. This is do or die for Invictus Gaming. They need to try and find something here to tie. Looking for the parallel convergence one more time. Tabe now jumping into the back lines. Trap's going to stop them here. Otto actually caught down. He's going to take it down. Rookie fights the kill. But what can he do next? He's on top of STYZ. Gets the death bar. But STYZ is at full health. Is able to clean up Rookie. It's a one for one trade. Mid laners go down. But this is the third and final inhibitor turret falling. For Invictus Gaming, Saint just demolished through the base of the IG lineup. Rookie unable to outplay STYZ right there as they continue the forward march. They're going to try and take on the final Nexus turret that stays. STYZ going to get jumped on by Power Reverse. They take down the Caitlyn. This might need a saving grace that IG needed to get back into the game. They're going to be able to take down Otto as well. He's getting jumped on at the moment. Shu will fall down. Double kill for Kid. Looking for Acorn. They take him down as well. Triple kill coming out for the jungler. But that's IG's base in shambles at the moment. This is going to be a difficult mountain to climb. Like you said, they would need to do that about three or four more times. I don't know how he's alive. I, what? <laughs> uh, big thing, though, is that that team fight was still incredibly close. Yes, there were super creeps that were assisting out, but Otto didn't get the Chaos Storm off, which is a massive AoE damage spell that could certainly turn a fight. So... Rookie and Zatai trying their very best to keep IG on life support. I tell you what, Zatai's been doing a really good job of keeping them on life support. Those parallel convergers have been on point in this match, locking down crucial people in a stun, allowing Rookie to do cleanup duty. But that's three inhibitors gone. I think the only thing that IG get from this is three ways crash into the base and they're going to farm up and try and pull back some gold. But eventually it's just going to be six super minions on top of one Nexus turret. It's also eventually going to be a Baron should Saint fail for their third attempt. Well, they're looking for it one more time here. They're inside of the base. Satai actually looking to try and get a flank off here. Spotted out. Ultimate does come out one more time. Blocked out by Tabe. Slowly these waves are crashing in towards the base. Rain actually takes a lot of damage from that laser. We'll be able to heal up across these minions. In fact, has a more than Mount Morty has picked up already. Ultimate comes out from the graves rather early, trying to get some damage down. They can't defend this inhibitor quite nicely, but they will try. There's the pillar coming out, trying to separate the team. Lancer pulls SUIZ back to safety. They knock down Tabe immediately. SUIZ gets the death mark. Is it going to be enough? Yes, it is. They find the kill. Acorn's next to TIE fights as well. Now Otto trying to be the zero they need. It's not enough. IG find three more kills against Say. They're not done just yet, but the Nexus, it's on top of Minions. They're going to have to try and defend this one. It's not going to be enough. The Minions might actually end the game here. IG found two more kills what is happening but I have to try and stop these super minions what is going on Frostkin how are they winning this game okay Invictus Gaming have dug themselves into so far of a hole but they're trying to dig themselves out of it with their superior 5v5 like to just be frank like rookie uh, Tabe and Zatai are hard carrying these team fights and they're just doing it so much better than Saint Saint do not have the tank line needed to protect their carries that Nexus. Unfortunately. Is at half itself. They lost that final turret. This is so too little too late. Again, they would have to continue to do this about three to five more times. And I doubt that Saint are not going to take the Baron here. To IG's credit, they fought that at the inhibitor before it went down. The inhibitors are respawning. If they can do that again and fight them before inhibitors go down while the Nexus is invulnerable. IG have a tiny window. This is like the last chance, last play of the game that they get. Oh, they're going to try and look to try and steal this Baron as his kid has to come out big. Pops the ultimate, not going to find it. Baron goes over towards Saint. Okay, so we're going to attempt this again, <laughs> but now with Baron buff. And actually lots of pings just coming out from Saint. They don't care. They're waiting, going back to base, buying items. They ping the Elder Dragon. That's where they want to fight. We've tried this three <laughs> times. We couldn't get it the, the third time. Now we're going to do it with Baron and Elder Drake. They no need mistakes. The assistance. But IG, saving grace for them, if anything, is the gold lead is almost irrelevant right now. But they have no base to defend. It comes entirely down to execution of team fight now. And unfortunately, Captain and Acorn, like I said, the Swain, the Swain means nothing. Trundle doesn't care. He's got Ignite, he's got his ultimate. Sivir doesn't care. She can hit Swain and still hit the back line. And there's literally nothing STYZ can do from Echo, Trundle, and Zed jumping on his face. Look at this. 
Ga uh, Invictus Gaming want to try and fight for this Elder Dragon. They could try and possibly contest him at the pit and find a good fight. Tabe leading the charge, takes a bit of damage. Otto looking to try and start the fight. There's a hook coming from Seal on top of Tabe, though. This Dragon's has been started. Look at all those traps. There's no way you're getting over that, my friend. Flash actually comes out from Seal to get over the wall. They find one trap, trying to get back into the base. Here comes the tie, jumping in, power convergence there. He's on top of STYZ. Pops the ultimate, get back over the wall. Elder Dragon has fallen. Tabe's being caught on a trap, has to flash away. Kid used the ultimate to get some nice positioning there. But IG, they're running away for the lights. Power convergence. It only slows down Sane a bit longer. Inhibitor has respawned though, Frostkirin. This is the final stand for Invictus Gaming. And it's going to be Elder Drake, Baron of Saint. Will it be enough to compensate for their lackluster 5v5? Can the miracle play happen for IG? What? And they reset map. <laughs> what just happened, Frostkirin? That was going to be the final stand. They chunked out Invictus Gaming. They blew a lot of summoner spells and a lot of ultimates to try and contest that dragon. They have a 90 second buff, which might actually run out soon. And they're just going back to base. Uh, QSS. Quid is actually going to get caught out here. QSS. There's a QSS purchase, so that's what it was. It was everyone on Saint saying that we are close in gold. Uh, pick up the last remaining remnants of farm around the map. Make your final buys. And we're going to make one final stand. This is a 40-minute game that's gone on for far too long here for Saint. They looked great early. I'm actually rather disappointed in the way they've closed you out this game. Remember when we were climbing up the mountain and then yep. we just like face planted off of it? Yep. Saint have done the exact same thing. <laughs> but they may still hit the Nexus on the way down. Well, they might be able to take the mountain with them as they're working on this first inhibitor. IG opting not to pull the trigger here, which means their Nexus is now exposed and open. Saint looking for the next one. IG have to try and do something here. Look for the parallel convergence. It's been Zentai that is typically the battle what? call here. Invictus Gaming just giving up their inhibitors. I thought that has to be where they're going to try and fight. Saint now just looking towards the base, not even caring. There's on the hunt being popped. Nothing else can happen just yet. Gravity Field comes down. Saint being very patient. Elder Dragon has worn off. We look for the fight now. Oh, SYC. JK, it just. Faded. Takes a little bit of damage there, but Elder Dragon is going to fall off rather shortly. Power Converges comes out as his high finds nobody inside of that. There goes that Elder Dragon above. They now have a window of opportunity to try and find Rookie. Looking for a flank in the back lines. Ryan is actually taking a lot of damage down the back lines. Can't go back to heal because the Nexus is exposed. The minions are coming. Rek'Sai has gone in. He's looking for damage. The Addix is being hit. Say they have to try and fight now. Invict the scaling. They're on to STYC. Rookie It's not able to pick up the kill. Otto takes down Kid. STYC is still alive. Invict the scaling. They can't master the defense. And Tsutai, try and try as he might, a triple kill falls on over towards Caitlyn. And Saint, I hate to say this, but somehow close out that game. <laughs> it was a long, grueling affair, and you can see it on Acorn's face. That is, that is a game that no one is happy with. Nope. Not at all. And if you're Saint, you'd be impressed with how you played that very early game, especially if you're a Saint fan. But you would also be very shocked by how they played that late game. It to be honest, it felt atrocious coming up from Saint. It goes back to the idea about where the power is weighted in Saint, not only their composition, but also in their team.